Okay, let's talk about the agenda. Well, you know, one of the things that really has concerned me about the deployment, the proliferation of this technology, and especially at this particular frequency level, is the effect on fertility. And so over the past several years, I have looked extensively and exhaustively at information that's available and, and what we can infer from what these emissions do to fertility, specifically human fertility. At this point, it, it, it seems to be very strange to me that the only studies that are available to speak of in terms of how these emissions affect human fertility are on the sperm. And I find that rather odd that the eyes are all on that ball, so to speak, because I firmly believe that the actual intended victim of this deployment and this proliferation of technology is the female ovum. And I have very good reason to believe it's intentional. With respect to what we can observe, it is very obvious that there's a decline in fertility and you will find it in the more westernized cultures where the technology has been deployed as a result of their affluence and access to this technology. In terms of animal studies, I am aware of some studies that were done in a, in a laboratory setting where hamsters were exposed to Wi-Fi emissions, very close proximity, and hamsters that were not as a control group, and the hamsters that had Wi-Fi exposure with a router in their cage did not have offspring. Those that were in the control group had four, five, six babies at a time until their period of reproduction had passed with their age. So. Uh, it, it, and then there was also a, an experiment that was done, I believe it was in Denmark, where students had exposed uh, watercress seeds to a Wi-Fi router and another group that was not, and both seeds sprouted, one withered and died rather quickly that was exposed to the radio frequency emissions. So we've got kids doing experiments on seeds, we've got people doing experiments on animals, but yet we have thousands of scientists and hundreds of universities and research institutions that are avoiding the elephant in the room and that is what is it doing to the human ovum and the females and the young girls who have these devices in their laps with the antennas at the bottom center by design to get as close as possible to the ovaries. So in terms of the studies that are out there on other problems that this causes, well, uh, let's get into something that I find very interesting. When you have molecules that are being subjected to an electro electromagnetic field, a radio frequency field that results in oscillations and vibrations, what you're going to have are, are contortions, you're going to have changes in structure of molecules. One of the interesting studies that I came across was a modeling study that was done on insulin receptors. And what ended up happening is as a result of exposure to the microwave radio frequency emissions, the insulin receptors ended up having their configurations changed in what is known as structural isomerism. And what that means is they don't have the same configuration, so they can't attach to the receptors. And so what you have is what I believe we're seeing, aside from all the high fructose corn syrup and these strange sweeteners and the dietary changes, you're seeing, you're seeing a lot of diabetes uh, happening in young children. And I believe it's a direct result of microwave exposure and structural isomerism in the insulin receptors. And that is creating uh, this obesity and diabetes epidemic that we're having in our children, as well as the grown-ups. So there's a, 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 okay, so about the, the grown-ups, can it, okay, let's talk about the, the, the link between the radio waves and then the cancer. Yeah, you know, that's something that, of course, is, is highly debated, but I believe that uh, the debate is over. There, there are studies that were done by Leonard Hardell, who's an oncologist, and he put together a very long-term uh, study on cell phone exposure and a direct correlation, causation relationship between cell phone use and brain cancer. And it's, it's irrefutable evidence that microwaves do cause cancer. It, the, the research is there. There are literally thousands of studies out there that show this. It's almost as if it, it's, it's so true that it, it, it's such a nightmare that no one wants to believe it. You could literally fill a wheelbarrow full of papers and, and, and stack them 20 feet tall, and they're all going to show the same thing. The directed research machinery in this country is similar to a restaurant, and I think I've mentioned this before. When I go to a restaurant, I tell the waiter what I want, and he takes my order, and I pay the, the, the facility, and they deliver me what I asked for. Well, that's what's going on in the scientific community. They are ordering what they want, and they're paying to get what they want. So there are all kinds of studies that clearly